So when you're actually being, you know, difficult or having, you know, really strong emotions to um, or judging self, which usually happens and then um, it's projected out to judge another. It's really if we would just take a step back for a second and look that whatever it is that we're doing to another or saying an, about another, th- thinking or feeling about another is really truly what we're thinking and feeling and saying about ourselves. Mm-hmm. Because if we could all just <laughs> hone it in and really just be kind and do some self love and really take care of our own personal being, that is what's going to contribute out mm-hmm. to everything around you. And it only takes one person to change a thousand. Welcome to the Starting Over Stronger Show, where you'll find help and hope for your divorce survival and recovery. Divorce well, live well. If there is ever a time to change our vibration, I think it would arguably be during and after a divorce. And to help you do just that and to understand what all this vibration and energy stuff is all about anyway, I have invited energy practitioner Angela Holmes to the show to share with you more about some powerful ways that we can manifest our own positivity, light and love and nourish our spirits and our soul in ways that we've maybe never explored. Well, Welcome to the show, Angela. Well, thank you very much for having me. It's my pleasure. Yeah. Thank you for being here. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, <laughs> there's so much. I've been <laughs> doing a, a spiritual life coaching for about 25 years. I'm also an occupational therapist, um, kind of been in between allopathic medicine and Eastern philosophies um, just as long. So I've dabbled with pretty much every type of energy medicine that there is. Um, body work, breath work, and um, really changing how we kind of perspectively see ourselves and see the world on a day-to-day basis. So that's really the key to um, how I like to live. And so in doing so, I've been able to teach that. And that's pretty much the basis of my work. Very good. And you're a mom of... I am a mom of three boys um, and a couple animals. Um, so yes, it's a very busy household. I very much uh, understand what it means to work multiple jobs and have a lot of things going on at one time. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, a lot of our listeners can relate to that. So, well, thank you again for being here. I'm looking forward to having this conversation. Before I dive into getting your expert insight on 11 ways we can change our vibration, I just want to share my elementary understanding uh, that our vibration is simply our state of being. Um, From what I gather, everything in the universe is energy. And so I just like to say, followers of God, be rest assured that God knows this. (laughs) He himself is the highest form of energy. So I just want to create a framework for a conversation that will allow everyone to listen for understanding today about things that might be different than what they've heard before. And maybe, you know, listeners, you're in the same space that I was not too long ago, thinking that all of this energy and vibration and consciousness stuff is just to woo woo uh, for a, a Christian girl, or maybe, you, you know, you have a different insight on that, but everyone that knows me knows that I love God and Jesus. And there is much about the way that I identify myself that has recently shifted over the last few years. So I just want to preface what I want to share about my understanding of the world of energy work by saying that I think there is entirely too much religiosity and flat out sacrilege in so many communities. And I I will include Christians in that, including the three that I've been actively involved in with and deeply wounded by um, that. I almost feel like I owe people an explanation that I'm not that kind of Christian. (laughs) I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. I'm not going to tell you that something is wrong because I interpreted a version, a verse of the Bible differently than you. I actually know and love God and try to live like Jesus. And I think that accepting and loving others for who they are, not what they do, is a rule of living for me and and, and uh, for a lot of people that I know. And yet religion has failed me time and time again with everything from a cult-like experience uh, to being shunned, to being having church leadership that has basically tried to justify sin in unthinkable ways and just 
you know, generally, I guess a, a, a sense of judgment and, and just not a place that I've ever really been able to relate to. And so I, you know, have not completely uh, walked away from my faith, but it looks a lot different than it used to. And I'm okay with that. And so I, I've come to a place where I really believe that everything in the universe just teaches us more about God and Christ. And many verses in the Bible correlate with my belief that Jesus held the highest level of consciousness in the existence of the universe. He's, he created consciousness. Uh, my faith in Jesus tells me that everything was created by him, for him, and and through him. And therefore, he must definitely created the very bri- vibrations that we are going to speak about raising today. And I think you will hear f- many familiar philosophies that you can relate to uh, for the teachings of Christ, if that is important to you today. Now, having said that, I know that some of my listeners today aren't coming from that place of uh, that worldview. And so we're just going to talk about it energy as a whole, um, what I've learned, what Angela has learned and practiced for 25 years. And so first and foremost, I think it's a good place to start is just to say that energy is the quality of a person, place, thought, or thing. And it's something that can be measured. Uh, If you were asked, Angela, to define energy, how would you define it? Well, every, everything is energy, every, absolutely everything. There's nothing um, on this earth or outside of this earth that is not at the core of its being comes from light and light is energy. Mm-hmm. So at the core of what we are is basically like what you just said is to me, God is love, source is love. And at the core of everything we are is that energy. Um, we could not exist without that. So um, as you were talking about, you know, your religion and such, I am not a religious person. Uh, I have studied many different religions. And what I have found with all those different religions growing up and talking and going and seeing and being around different um, individuals is religion in itself does have a core value of trying to bring community together. Mm -hmm. And when you bring community together to work together as a whole, and I do believe that that is love when we come together in this embodiment and to have service for others versus service to self, then that is what we're doing. And to me, that is the ultimate expression of energy. Mm -hmm. So I, and I believe that that is love. Yeah. I like that. And I know that when I'm vibrating at a higher level, (laughs) <laughs> I feel high, I feel lighter. I feel happier. I feel yes. more at ease. I, there, you know, the days that I feel like I must have lower vibrations, I feel heavier and darker and confused. And like, I, everything feels like it's too much. And I sometimes even have physical ailments and, or, you know, headaches or pains that, that are unexplained by activities in my life. And just, I think almost all spiritual traditions kind of point the way toward, higher realms of consciousness, whether they use that terminology or not. Right. Right. And a lot of times you'll hear the word awareness versus consciousness and very much meaning same thing. So the more aware you are, um, as we've evolved consciously, Mm -hmm. you're going to be more aware of not only like your own personal self, your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, but you're going to be aware of everything around you. So that's that energy piece where we have like these little antennas, receptors, if you will, and that picks up on everything. So mm-hmm. a lot of times that those highs and lows that you're feeling could potentially not even belong to you. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, that's a big piece of really maintaining your energy and being very aware and very thoughtful of what it is that you're experiencing throughout mm-hmm. the day. So that has a lot to do with just being in complete and total, you know, awareness with from a vibrational standpoint love happens to be it's been measured um happens to be one of the highest vibrational equivalences that you can have Mm -hmm. so from a physics standpoint you can't really be in love and fear at the same time you can't be in love and apathy at the same time you cannot be in love and judgment at the same time so Mm -hmm. when you're in love you're in that center point and since we live in a very dualistic environment we're going to dip up and down. So Mm -hmm. that dipping up and down is actually healthy. So we can recognize, you know, all the other vibrations and all the other awarenesses that are going on around us. Mm -hmm. So when you're dipping down a little bit, it kind of gives you a a perspective to stop for a second and to respond versus react to that and just say, Oh, okay. So, you know, recognizing and acknowledging what's going on around you and then being able to make a choice from there. So, yeah. 
No, yeah. it's just awareness and observation. Yes. Yeah. And I think that's, yeah. especially, I think if you come from a religious background, uh, unfortunately, I think that the connotation that kind of goes along with that is unfortunately based in reality, that there's a lot of judgment and fear that is perpetuated in environments like that. And that's judgment of self as well mm-hmm. as judgment mm-hmm. of others. And like you said, that that cannot coexist with love. And so I've actually been recently reading some of Dr. David R. Hawkins' work and studying his map of consciousness, just trying to understand how all this relates to, you know, my my belief system. And I, I have been very interested in how he talks about, and I, I guess I can't really even explain it, but and maybe you can. Um, the fact that these different emotions or experiences that we feel um, that we give names to like shame and love and pride and anger, and they can actually be measured uh, mathematically. I don't know exactly how that works. So you tell me if you do, but uh, what I had learned was that shame, for example, is the lowest vibration at 20 while peace is the, as among the highest at 600 um, and 250 is neutral and everything below that is kind of like contracting or lowering your vibration, uh, including pride, anger, fear, grief, guilt, apathy. Whereas everything above neutral is expanding your consciousness for things like willingness, acceptance, love, and joy. What are your thoughts on these? Um, You know, David Hawkins, I mean, they have so much that you can research about that, that talks about the actual physics of all of that and the measurements of emotions. And, you know, I do agree with that because there's no way around when you sense an emotion, you know, how you feel. So how you feel really determines of which way you've gone with your vibrational awareness. So when you're in shame, it's an emotion that gets locked into your body. And when that gets locked into your body, you kind of like are a magnet to more lower frequency and lower vibration. And so that that's what happens is you start attracting things that are matched with that resonance. Mm -hmm. So when you are aware that you're matching with that resonance and say you're having things happen to you throughout the day and you're like, oh my gosh, what's going on? This is such a terrible day and stuff like that. You're actually putting more energy towards that resonance. Mm -hmm. So if you can catch yourself from doing that, what happens is you make a choice and you make a decision. I want to feel better. So even in that, I want to feel better from an energetic standpoint, from a physics standpoint, the universe, if you will, has to correspond with what it is that I'm setting out there. So if I decide, you know what, I no longer want to feel that way, I'm going to go over here and take a minute and take a breath, take a pause. And I'm going to choose to feel better. I'm going to choose to look at something that's less shameful. I'm going to choose to look at something that feels a little bit better. Even Mm -hmm. if it's not this gigantic leap, it's something better. And what happens is that resonance of frequency, you start attracting more of that. So Mm -hmm. it only takes about 10 to 16 seconds to change your frequency, to change what it is that you're magnetizing to you. Mm -hmm. So that's more along the lines of what Hawkins was talking about. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not exactly sure how they measured all that. I I know (laughs) that they have their equipment and Tesla and Einstein and Hawkins and all these, you know, there is measurements of all that that you can look up. Um, But that's what they've done is they measure the resonance of what comes, you know, you start attracting towards you just Mm -hmm. by that emotion that you extend out. Because when you extend that emotion out, that is what how you create and you create from that energy. Right, right. Well, and I think so much of the understanding these of these vibrations that we're all putting off all the time are, are, are is kind of intuitive. I mean, it, the more true something is, the more it vibrates. And I'm sure that everyone listening has experienced that on some level, whether you called it by those names or not, you know. Right. Your gut instinct. I mean, if something feels off, then chances are it's off. When you yeah. walk into the room and what do they use the expression, the elephant in the room, you know, it's tense. Is and you can thick, feel it. It's heavy. Everybody yeah. can feel it. That's just, that's that's the equivalence to awareness of the vibration that's in the room. Yeah. So you can look at it and decide, oh, I either don't want to be in here or what can I do to change it? So the minute that you start asking questions around the energy that you're feeling, you also mm-hmm. can change the frequency just by asking a question or choosing a different emotion or a different thought. Mm-hmm. So it's it's pretty easy to 
once you understand how that works to just really shift, it's kind of like, you know, pivot. So Mm -hmm. when you start feeling that heaviness, you just pivot, you pivot to something that feels lighter. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I'm all about, you know, working with my clients on just their, their, I don't call it consciousness. I call it a lot Mm -hmm. of times I call it personal responsibility and awareness, but I'm really talking about the same kinds of things where, you know, maybe we've been in dysfunctional relationships and we've just experienced a different way of living for so long that we find it difficult to grasp how much power we have over our own feelings and thoughts and moods and actions. And, you know, like rather than taking a victim mentality um, toward all the things that happen to us in our lives, (laughs) we, we can go, you know what? that doesn't matter. I get to choose how I'm going to respond in this situation. I can actually even choose how I feel. The book that I'm reading with uh, David R. Hawkins right now is uh, Letting Go. And I'm still trying to understand it. I guess I'll put it that way. But um, from what I do understand, it really, truly, simply is that just deciding to let something go. Yeah, that sounds even, like it's so simplistic, but I have literally <laughs> experienced like yes. where I'm having a physical pain and I'm just like breathing through it. I'm like, I'm letting this go. This isn't mine. And, and it goes and it's like so weird to me still. Right. Um, you know what you're talking, you know, what you're talking about too is from my belief and just my teachings and all the research that I've done is, you know, 98% of our thoughts, feelings, and emotions do not belong to us. Mm. Um, Working with children, working with the brain, working with all these different elements, you know, what I have found is that we are just a sponge. So from the time we're in, you know, womb, even before conception, when we're, you know, we come with all this DNA and all this, you know, all this remembrance, Mm -hmm. um, And then we're stuffed into this little cubicle (laughs) and then we hear and sense and see and uh, feel everything that's going on around us from the time, you know, we're in there all the way up. So we pick up on all these concepts that we believe are ours. And so that's why sometimes we have difficulties figuring out, well, wait a minute, that doesn't feel exactly right, but this is what I've been taught. So it must be true versus being you know, taught that you need to go in and just sit with yourself and say, Hey, does this feel right for me? Does this mm-hmm. work for me? Yeah. And, and that's the concept that you're talking about is just, you know, really truly getting deep within yourself and checking in with yourself. And when you do that, you can kind of bypass, if you will, Um, The things that you were that were put upon you that were projected on you that were taught to you. And I don't believe that people maliciously teach other people things. I think people teach what they know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as we evolve from creation, we're forever raising our awareness and raising our consciousness. So what worked back, you know, 50, 60, 100, a couple thousand years ago, doesn't quite work for where we are today. So, right. you know, as we shift that perspective, then we're able to choose different things. Um, but definitely choice is huge. Mm-hmm. It's the basis of really, truly your gut instinct and your intuition. Mm-hmm. And it is our, we were born. So the fact that we were born, we have the sovereign right to choose. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that's something that has not been really instilled in us to have that. I agree. Um, And again, I don't think it it was necessarily, you know, our parents did that on purpose or anything. It's just what they knew and how they knew to teach us. So exactly. um, mm -hmm. You made a great point when you you used the word sponge. And I, I was thinking about how, you know, you, you can turn on the news or social media for not very long at all and sink into a heaviness in your gut that sometimes sucks you in and won't let you go. But then you witness a puppy, you know, cuddling with an infant or you feel, and you feel the warmth inside and like everything is right in the world for just a few seconds. Right. I mean, you get to choose, like you said, correct. Which of those places you're going to stay in. And I wrote an article like years ago and it actually got published and it was kind of giving this same analogy, but from the vantage point of a train ride, like life is a train ride and, you know, out one side of the train is all the good in life and out the other side of the train is all the bad. And, you know, you're free to move around in the, in the train. (laughs) You get to look out whichever windows you want to look out of. (laughs) Correct. And it's not necessarily bad. Like you said, you're reading a book about letting go. So a lot of people have a tendency to not accept 
where they are. And we're talking about that personal responsibility again, because we really do create our own realities. Um, Mm -hmm. That's a hard pill to swallow. It really is. Again, we haven't really necessarily been taught that. So when we're teaching our children to do certain things, nine times out of 10, we're telling them what to do versus giving them like a logical consequence or a choice to choose. Mm -hmm. So now that we know that, that's where we have that inner battle within ourselves as well. Mm-hmm. So seeing what isn't working is pretty powerful because without that, then we wouldn't have the ability to choose something else. So when you know when you accept that where you were and what you created and kind of why you stayed where you stayed was it's okay because where you were is exactly where you needed to be to yes. to have that awareness but at the same time you know accepting where you were also is okay because you're accepting the person where they are so you're taking like you said that personal responsibility because maybe mm-hmm. that person is just doing them and that's all they know how to do Yes. So yeah. if you look at, okay, they're doing them and I'm outgrowing this and I no longer want, you know, this no longer works for me or this doesn't feel good or whatever, where this and that, then again, you have that choice to accept where you are yeah. and you can choose to let go of that experience and then go with something else. So, right. you know, what happens is too, when you're not in acceptance or looking at, you know, all these different avenues that you can take, we have a tendency to take those emotions and stuff them down. And so when we stuff them in and we don't look at them or we push them aside or like, oh, I'll deal with that later. That's really not important. Yes, I'm going to go ahead and do X, Y, and Z over my own intuition of what feels good and right for me. I'm going to take care of others versus taking care of myself. What happens is that starts to boil up energetically within our bodies and that can cause a lot of disease that can cause Mm -hmm. anger. That's what can cause resentment. That's Mm -hmm. the, you know, you get all those different feelings and emotions kind of get stuffed in there. And then over time you forget what you've stuffed in there. So then you explode and you're like, well, what just happened? So it's emotions serve a purpose so we can recognize really what we aren't looking at and what we're not accepting from our own personal uh, viewpoint, which is looking mm-hmm. within. Yeah. Within. I think way too many of us don't see the connections between the physical and the emotional and spiritual. There is so much crossover there. There, You cannot have, I mean, you hear all the time, the mind, body, spirit, uh, you hear this, the wellness, the holistic view mm-hmm. and to be in a flow state. Um, flow is like medicine. It's your own personal medicine. When you're in really taking care of being in this humanistic realm, this, you know, this aspect right now, you know, you do have a responsibility to take care of yourself. And that Mm -hmm. means to look at everything as a whole. So none of it can be separate. You know, it's all one, one concept. Yeah. And we're a lot of times aren't taught to look at ourselves as a whole being. Yeah. You know, we well, right. Because like you said, the person's teaching us don't don't didn't know that either. So correct. how could they have taught us? Right. Well, you know, right now in the current state of affairs in our world, and especially <laughs> if you are simultaneously enduring the failure of a relationship or a divorce, it has never been more important to protect your energy or to raise your vibration. So Angela, I, what I wanted to kind of do is just kind of go through, I, I, I ended up with 11 things, but I want you to chip in anything that I didn't cover and, and we'll just kind of flow through this and see what uh, comes to the surface. I know we talk a lot about, you know, in life about how what we put out into the world, we get back, you know, like attracts like there's a universal law that says, you know, that you're responsible for your life. That's what we've been talking about now is, is uh, personal responsibility. You don't get to blame anyone else for what you chose to think or say or feel or do. And if you do stay stuck in that place of blame, you'll never grow. So, you know, you don't want to do that. So <laughs> this month in on the podcast, we're talking about change, seasons of change, uh, which come along with divorce. And, you know, change can literally only happen when you decide to manifest change. And maybe the divorce that you're going through was your idea, and maybe it wasn't, but you still can take the reins of your life according to how you decide you want to direct your thoughts and emotions. So share your thoughts with us on this Hey, this is Annie. I wanted to stop for just a moment and ask you what you're doing besides listening to this podcast to take care of yourself during your divorce. I mean, after all, if you don't, who will? 
There are several ways you can join Starting Over Stronger as you heal through divorce. First of all, very exciting news. We just launched the brand new StartingOverStronger.com website. Come check it out and become a member so you can stay up to date on all the latest opportunities for support. If you haven't yet, you're also welcome to join our private Starting Over Stronger After Divorce group on Facebook. Denise recently joined there and shared that her divorce is a minute by minute struggle at times. And Gretchen also joined us recently as she faces a difficult separation situation and has all kinds of questions about what to do to protect herself. And of course, the more of you that join this group, the more answers you all can get from each other. And of course, I chip in there too. Now, the best spot for answers is in private or group coaching where we can talk specifically specifically about the exact issues that you're facing in a private format. So you'll also find out more about those on the new website. I watch for you to join both the new website platform and the Facebook group. Remember, the website is just startingoverstronger.com. But the private Facebook group is starting over stronger after divorce. And you will have to answer some questions there. And we make very sure that anybody that joins is someone that belongs. So I hope to see you all there soon. I would love to meet more of my listeners and get to know each of you and the situations that you're facing. So I hope to see you there soon. You know, you were just saying how the responsibility and we can choose to manifest Mm -hmm. um, individually. I feel like we've lost the concept, though, especially with everything that's going on right now, is we we're really being asked to look at how important it is to understand that we are a collective consciousness, We, we are a collective source of energy. And so when you're actually being, you know, difficult or having, you know, really strong emotions to, um, or judging self, which usually happens. And then, um, it's projected out to judge another. It's really, if we would just take a step back for a second and look that whatever it is that we're doing to another or saying about another thinking or feeling about another is really truly what we're thinking and feeling and saying about ourselves. Mm -hmm. Because if we could all just (laughs) hone it in and really just be kind and do some self-love and really take care of our own personal being, that is what's going to contribute out Mm -hmm. to everything around you. And it only takes one person to change a thousand. And then that next one person changes a thousand. It it Mm -hmm. truly is a ripple effect. So when we're sitting in that center place um, of responsibility, of self-love, of inner peace and our awareness, then we have this magnetic energy that we send out to the rest of the world. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think people tend to forget that. And people tend to forget that we are also a piece and a part of this earth um, Mm -hmm. that gifts to us on a daily, regular basis, and that we're gifting to it as well. So it's really finding um, that center point, I think is what we've lost track of and Mm -hmm. what we're being given a chance to look at right now. Um, We've asked for change. We've asked for change on a multitude of many, many, many different subjects and categories. Mm -hmm. And if you just look at the bigger picture and the perspective is we're absolutely 100% getting that change. We're definitely being asked to take a look at how we've been going about allowing um, other people or other things or other concepts determine what we choose, how we behave, how we treat each other, how we treat ourselves. And I, you know, I think that that's kind of huge. And I think it's pretty awesome, actually, that we're being given this opportunity to, to take a look at it and take a a step back and to really decide what it is that we want to create thus forward. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, nobody has to have it explained to them that Pride and anger and fear and grief and guilt and shame feel bad (laughs) and (laughs) peace and joy and love and acceptance (laughs) and willingness feel good. So why is this so hard? I don't know. (laughs) I really don't. I don't have the answer to that, but I do know that there are some things that we can do to raise our vibration and to spend more of our time in those good places than we currently are. And so that's what we're going to talk about. And the first one is the one that you've mentioned several times already. All we need is love, right? Love, so. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I listeners call to mind somebody who's easy to love and hold that person in your heart and visualize them sitting in front of you and just notice how you feel. Do you feel lighter? 
Do you feel more expansive? Do you feel happier? Of course you do. Um, you, you're you feeling that through the core of your being. And that is the exact shift that we're looking for. Okay. Choosing to spend time in love raises your vibration. So give us some examples, Angela, of how we can do that. To be in love, um, first and foremost, is to do really good self-care, to take care of yourself, to love yourself. Most people don't even have a a concept of what that means. Um, Nurturing self is so important. And when you're nurturing yourself, you're, you know, as a woman, you're not just nurturing your feminine aspect. You're also nurturing that masculine aspect because really at the core of, you know, our being, we're both things. And you hear this a lot. So you can't really have one without the other. And when you put that together, um, so you're putting some receptivity with some action, you're putting that together, you find love. Okay. Mm -hmm. And at your center point, that's what we're trying to get back to. Because when you resonate at that core of who you are, you're resonating with love. And one of the best ways you can do that is just really taking a deep breath and asking yourself, you know, every day, what can I do that's going to be loving for me? What can I do that's going to contribute love to my family, to another? When you start your day and you start thinking that way before you start thinking about, you know, what's in it for me or, or what I can get or how I can out manipulate this or that. Um, and really come into that place of just asking that question, what is loving for me and what is loving for others? Um, truly everything that you do, you'll come from a place of just kindness and responsivity, you know, what you call responsibility, service to others over service to self. And I know I just said do self love, because when you're doing self love, then you're actually a service to others, because you're being a love, loving, kind, compassionate being for yourself. So you're going to magnetize that out, you're going to project that out. So Mm -hmm. in all actuality, that's what you're going to be offering. And you're going to be getting that back in return. And so yeah, just, you know, small acts of kindness, small acts of compassion. There's no other way to no, there's no other way to put it. Yeah. yeah. Just um, maybe not saying the things you want to, that you're thinking <laughs> at the moment. Um, maybe just taking a pause and taking a break um, for just a second and just deciding, is this going to be helpful? Um, is this going to, you know, change the situation? Is, is there anything that I can do in this yeah. moment? Um, things like that. So again, going back to asking some questions as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and if it's not kind and compassionate and serving you or anybody else. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's not a place of love that you're in right now. Right. Yeah. And and tuning your heart to love is is probably the easiest and yet maybe most oh my complicated God. way your, <laughs> to get your, your energy yes. to soar. Seriously, put your hand on your heart. I mean, just putting your hand on your heart and just taking a deep breath. I mean, right there. You've just you've already tapped into your own energy. It's truly just that simple. And people are like, oh, I don't know what to do. And, you know, they get really confused. And it really takes just, you know, 10 seconds, 30 seconds to drop into your center point, take a couple deep breaths and function and focus from that area. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this all translates to brain research, too. I mean, the more everything we talk about today um, resonates with brain science as well, just in in the way your brain responds to breath work. And and, and And I did, um, I did get a certification in what it's, you know, it's called heart math. Mm -hmm. And it, there is huge studies on what happens to your brain when you focus on your heart and when you focus on slowing your breath down and literally just focusing on the beating of your heart and just listening for Mm -hmm. 30 seconds and how it does change the physiological aspects in your brain. And it has a lot to do with reward, the reward system in the amygdala, how the frontal lobe then uh, responds to stimulus coming in and Mm -hmm. so forth. Oh yeah. Yeah. Tons and tons of research around what happens when you focus on just your actual heart. Yeah. Well, and speaking of your heart, when your heart is broken, one of the (laughs) most difficult things to deal with is forgiveness. And I, I think it's too seldom mentioned helper acceptance, (laughs) Um, shame and blame. Obviously we know are low energy vibrations, the lowest, according to Dr. Hawkins and, and among the lowest, no matter, who you ask. But if you can understand how to gain acceptance, you're a giant leap 
closer Over. to forgiveness. Yes. I mean, yes. releasing yourself from that pull of negative energy weighing yes. on you all the time. I mean, Angela, how do we come to a place of truly accepting people and situations? And let's just be more specific here. Your ex, cause you're going through a divorce <laughs> for yeah. what they are and be able to extend the forgiveness and free right. ourselves from all, you know, that. Again, forgiveness is also a state of being in which mm-hmm. judgment cannot, it just cannot be there. So when you, when you look at forgiveness, really first and foremost, you want to focus on forgiving yourself mm-hmm. and that's going to get you there a lot quicker than trying to forgive somebody that you're really angry with. But what you want to look at is, you know, forgiving yourself because it isn't like when you start forgiving yourself and then decide to forgive another is you're not doing it from a place of I'm right, you're wrong, you're better, I'm worse or anything like that. Forgiveness is just an energetic piece that allows you to neutralize, if you will, the emotions that you have going on. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when it neutralizes those emotions, then you have better thought, you have better clarity. You can take that deep breath. You don't have to be so angry, you know, inside or so sad. Mm -hmm. Um, Because like you said before, acceptance and forgiveness go hand in hand. Um, And it is very difficult to forgive another person, especially if, you know, they haven't been so kind, hurt people, hurt people. You've heard that before. And so when we can look, if you will, from say God's point of view, he's going to love everybody regardless of what they've done or how they feel or, you know, what's going on. And that's kind of what forgiveness is. You're just taking that step back and just saying, you know, if I was hurt and I was projecting out to another person, then I would be the person hurting somebody. But I know that I'm a really good person. And I really didn't mean to do that. I was just really sad or really mad or just didn't really know what was going on. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what forgiveness is, is you're just taking that step back and just saying, putting yourself in a different perspective and taking yourself out of that situation. Um, And it doesn't necessarily make that person, you know, you're not saying that this person who hurt me is, you know, what he did was right per se, but it just takes away the, like you said, victimism of being in that situation anymore. So you don't bring to the surface again, when you get into the next relationship, that hurt emotion, because you're going to attract similar situations if you don't forgive yourself and say, okay, I was in this situation. Um, now I know better. So I'm going to forgive myself for either staying too long or not mm-hmm. knowing or whatever. And then it kind of gives you a break so you can focus forward, if you will, yeah. and not keep yourself stuck in that, that place that is just dark and ugly. Yeah. Um, forgiveness of self, um, first and foremost, allows you to create something different. Yeah. And, you know, you've said a few things that have kind of, I think, the the roots on this topic go very deep. I mean, we could probably Mm -hmm. have an entire episode just on forgiveness and acceptance (laughs) and the difference between forgiveness and acceptance. And I think it really does lie in whether or not you're choosing to look at the world from a black Mm -hmm. and white, right and wrong, Mm -hmm. or if you're choosing to look at the world in a place of acceptance of we are all where we are because of what we've been through and we're doing the best we can. And that's a, that's a framework that I choose for my life. People are where they are because of what's happened to them and the choices that they've made. And, and they are doing the best they can. Right. Now, not everybody sees life from that, except from that place. But if you can get there, I, I almost feel like forgiveness is a moot point because forgiveness is like you trying to say yes. who was right and who was wrong yes. and that you're forgiving this wrong. And although, you know, something maybe was a literal wrong, you know, maybe, maybe there's a situation where there was a sexual assault or something that is definitely a wrong But, you know, acceptance is a different space than forgiveness, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. It just, it doesn't matter. Like, I mean, in, 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 in the lens of divorce, I always come back to this space that it took me years to get to. And it was that when I finally did decide to file for divorce, I didn't need to, I didn't need anybody's acceptance or understanding of my decision. I, there was literally nothing anybody could do that would have changed it for me at that point, because I had accepted that we had grown in different directions and there was no future for us. So I didn't need to put him in a space of being the wrongdoer. Right. 
even though I know there were things that were done to me that were wrong. And probably he will say the same. But the reality is that we are where we are and we were no longer in alignment. And right. that is a place of acceptance that I came to where I was able to say it to him. I'm not asking you to change anything. There's nothing that can be changed at this point. You go be you and do mm. you and enjoy your life. I'm going to be going and doing right. the same. And I yes, wish- and oh. and that actually, you know, so when you think of acceptance, you can maybe another word would be allowance. So mm-hmm. when you're allowing somebody to be who they are mm-hmm. and you're allowing yourself to be who you are. So, yes. So forgiveness can be a mute point at, at that time because you're just an allowance. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So That's you go do you. I'm going to go do me. Mm-hmm. And. And so that's a different, different way versus saying that I'm accepting the situation because you're not necessarily accepting the situation. Correct. You're being an allowance with what's happening and you're being an allowance with now I'm going to go create something different. Yeah. This isn't working for me. We've obviously grown apart or we're not contributing to each other to grow in the same direction. And that's Mm -hmm. okay. And that's okay. So yes. And so you're going to move forward. Mm -hmm. It's kind of almost a form of generosity, which is another thing. The next thing I wanted to talk about, which is, you know, anytime you get stingy or greedy with anything, love, attention, money, it lowers your vibration because it feels bad. And in fact, anytime you attach your happiness to something outside of yourself, it leaves you feeling the opposite of how you want to feel. So the antidote is generosity, right? Yeah, and generosity of spirit is really inherent in um, most of us. However, it's something that we have forgotten or maybe not been taught (laughs) once again, you know, but it is inherent in us because, you know, it's a state of recognizing there's plenty to go around. There's plenty for everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, It's that act of giving without thinking that you have to have something in return. Um, It's a huge space. It's a huge space of benevolence, if you will which just makes you feel good. It just Mm -hmm. makes you really feel good to just do something just because you can, just because you're going to make somebody else feel better. And that resonance is going to be projected back to you like tenfold. So yes, generosity of spirit. um, Yeah, I think a lot of times people think of generosity as something that people can do when they have an an abundance of something. And I think whatever you want more of in your life, Mm -hmm. you need to offer to someone. If you're feeling poor, give a little bit of money to charity. If you're feeling lonely, make an effort to make somebody smile. You you know, you have to give to get almost, you know, it actually generosity actually is like a, it's a behavior that actually is known to increase happiness. So, Mm -hmm. you know, it's been studied as well and it does, it increases the receptors in your brain and in your heart function. And it creates like a serotonin uplift, like an oxytocin uplift and you, you get happy. You don't even Mm -hmm. know, you don't even recognize that you're doing it. So absolutely. (laughs) It's, It's pretty big deal. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. And likewise, gratitude is yes. uh, equally as, as important. Generosity is giving away what we want to have, whereas gratitude is just being thankful for what we do have. What are your yes. thoughts on this? Um we do gratitude journals. Um, and if they don't want to write it down, then we have to verbalize um, an extra number of those daily. Cause I think we tend to forget what's right in front of us. So mm-hmm. gratitude helps you be in the present moment, helps you be right here right now with what you do have. And, you know, again, most people are looking for, I want this, or I want this, or can I have this? Or I would love to, you know, ask for this into my life. But if you look around, you probably have most of the things that you're asking for. And so when you can sit down and just even think about the things that you're grateful for, um, it's pretty huge. You know, I do a lot of therapy and um, such was, so I'm working on people's bodies and stuff all the time. And a lot of times I'm just grateful that I have feet and I have toes and I have Mm. fingers, you know, to do the things that I can do because I'm working with some people that, you know, they can't even twist a tube off of something to, you Mm. know, to do stuff like that. And so to me on a regular daily basis, I'm always grateful for like my body and be able to move my body. Um, And it does, it, it really puts it out there and you see people in a different way. You see things in a different way when you're truly grateful for what you already have. Mm -hmm. Um, The really amazing thing that happens is when you're really sitting with that generosity of self and being grateful, you actually start attracting more of those things and you start seeing more of that versus the lack of what you think you don't have. It's, it's kind of like a miracle, if you will, um, action. 
mm-hmm. to, you know, to show gratitude, to yeah. um, embody gratitude. Yeah. And a very simple way to do that is just to have a little notebook by your bed and every night before you turn the lights out, write down three things you're thankful for. Correct. We have a tendency to do it in the morning. Nighttime routine's a little hectic. So, um, <laughs> Well, any time of day is fine. <laughs> any time of day, but it's a good. Yes. It's good to go to bed on a happy note. <laughs> it is good to go to bed on a happy note and to wake up on a happy note as well. And mm-hmm. if I tell people, if you don't wake up and you're kind of crabby and you're already thinking about your to do list, <laughs> just hit snooze for a second and again go back into this is amazing. I have this yeah. wonderful bed. My bed is so comfortable. I love, you know, I love the fact that I just slept all night, you know, and things like that. That first 16 seconds can really frame how your day is going to show up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So we've talked about um, breath work on some level. We haven't really touched on meditation. I know for myself, I find both of these a little bit difficult. I mean, probably they really aren't near as hard as I make them, but (laughs) I can't really get my mind and body to be still and quiet for very long. (laughs) So I think there's just maybe a process we have to go to. How, how do we work toward that? You know, I think from what I've seen meditation and breath work, I I think because it's been so popularized, if you will, as we have to do it this way, and there's no other way to do it. And you have to attain something each time you do it. And that's really not true. Anytime you just take a pause and take a breath and just take some nice deep breaths and just focus for even 30 seconds to a minute, you're doing breath work, you're doing a meditation, we're in a meditative state more than what we give ourselves credit for when you're watching a movie and you're trying to put the popcorn to your mouth and you're missing your mouth, you're in a meditative (laughs) state. Um, (laughs) When you're, (laughs) when, you know, when you're kind of zoning out or dancing around and listening to music and you're moving your body and you're feeling really good, that's a meditative state. So meditation doesn't mean we just sit there and do nothing and be nothing in that moment. If that works for you, then by all means, it works for you, but it doesn't Mm -hmm. work for everyone. Moving meditation is huge. I prefer moving meditation because I can feel my body and I can get into the awareness of what's going on. And then lo and behold, you put a little bit of breath in that and you feel even better. Mm -hmm. So when you allow yourself to incorporate breathing or even focus on breathing, you actually are creating a somatosensory effect within your body and being. And that creates more awareness. And when you're creating more awareness, then you're more focused on how you feel, what's going on with your body. Um, Mm -hmm. Oh, I never noticed that. Well, I'm going to, you know, kind of move here. or I'm going to take a deep breath and focus my breath there and see what happens. And like you said, when you take a couple deep breaths, you can release the pain in your body. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to be like a strict regimen. Do it this way or nothing's going to happen. Are there a lot of wonderful, wonderful techniques that you can use for breath work? Absolutely. You know, uh, Shantinan yoga and some of the other things that you can do for, you know, anywhere. It's very difficult for people to do breath work three to 11 minutes, but when you do, you can actually change the physiological aspects of your body and your being. So again, yeah. those have been measured. Um, a lot of research done about all of those. So there, there is a lot to be said of what it does to the chemistry of your body and being, but you don't necessarily have to do all those things to get into a nice meditative state. That's a great perspective. I haven't heard that before. Yeah. So even walking, you know, walking and just, it's more of focusing on the intention of what you're doing when you're doing it. Yeah. And that's really at the heart of doing the breath work and doing meditation. It's trying not to be everywhere else, but trying to be very intentionally conscious of where you are right now in this moment. So what you're saying is really meditation and breath work, even though they sound big and ominous, really, we're just talking about living in the moment. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> simplistically <Wow>. put yeah <laughs> light bulb moment <laughs> if you told me this or if I heard this somewhere else I remember that when I first heard it I thought it was really woo woo but the past and the future are only in your mind the only right. truth is now the only truth is now so everything comes back to now so those are kind of we can Another topic we can go into for a very lengthy (laughs) podcast, but when we talk about linearity and dualistic um, living and kind of how we are in this world, then that's what we're talking about. The conscious mind, the humanistic conscious mind um, can only grasp so many concepts um, at this time. And Mm -hmm. so some of us, you know, go a little bit beyond, but it's more of we've researched it. We have a remembering of it and, and whatnot. 
but from a linearity aspect, we put kind of like a frame of time together mm-hmm. so we mm-hmm. can make sense of what's going on. So that's when you hear past and future. But if you're too far projected into the future and worrying about what's going to happen next and this and that, then you're creating a whole lot of conceptions and you're really just making conclusions about what's going to happen. And if I don't do this, then I'm not going to have this and stuff like that. But what you're actually doing is you're pulling the past energy and projecting it into the future. Mm -hmm. So what worked in the past or didn't work in the past is not something you necessarily want to bring to the future. So if you can just be in this now moment and say yes and recognize what happened previously Mm -hmm. and say, yes, that was really awesome. I'd like to have some more of that. Let's continue creating that. Or wow, that was not, that was not healthy. So when you can kind of be in that more present moment, then your future is basically basically set for you. So if you have Mm -hmm. the intention of being very present and very aware of what's happening in this moment, then you know exactly what you're, what's going to happen in the next 10 seconds in the next, you know, however long it takes you to get um, to the next choice, I guess, if you will. Um, So yeah. Are you struggling to decide whether divorce is the right decision for you or just tired of feeling like you're broken and everything is all your fault? The decision of how and whether to leave a toxic relationship can take years without good support from people who understand. The Starting Over Stronger Toxic Relationship Recovery Support Group is designed with you in mind. Led by me, Certified Divorce and Life Transition Coach Annie Allen, and with a small group of women in your shoes, you're going to find understanding here. We're going to talk about the patterns of these relationships and what you can do about them. There are currently two weekly groups running, one on Monday evenings at 6 p.m. Central and the other on your Wednesday lunch hour at noon Central. So whether you need an evening or a daytime group to meet your needs for privacy during this call, please consider joining us. If you're interested in learning more, just send an email with your interest from your secure email address that only you have access to, to Annie at startingoverstronger.com. And if you're in a controlling or abusive relationship, wondering how you could ever be a part of a support group like this without putting yourself at risk or exposing your desire to leave, please indicate that in your email and we can discuss solutions. You can make this work. And I know you feel alone, but you're not. Reach out and find the help you need. Well, you know, this actually is reminding me of a couple of different things. One is something that a counselor or therapist once said to me, which has always kind of stuck in my brain, that fear is looking at the future with God factored out. Uh And I, and I've, and the other thing that I've heard is that the root of, I think it's depression is backwards looking and the root of anxiety is forward looking. So in other words, if you, if you just live in the present, Mm -hmm. you won't have any, or certainly will have much less depression and anxiety because they are rooted in spending too much time in the past or too much time in fear of the future. Correct. What are your thoughts on that? everything that you just said to me, it sounds correct. Um, your perspective of being anxious and things like that are usually false belief systems anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, and nine times out of 10, you're actually excited for something. And we've come to the conclusion of when our body feels off or weird, or I don't know what's going to happen or this or that, that we get anxious when Mm -hmm. actually we're just in awareness of the energy that we're creating to project something different Mm -hmm. that we would like in the future. So that's probably why you heard that, that anxiety, um, lives in the future. Um, mm-hmm. because really, truly, I believe that anxiety is an awareness of yeah. what is possible. Okay. That's um, and then if we're pulling stuff from the past, then basically you're just, yeah, you've got a strong emotion that you're either not looking at, not allowing, um, mm-hmm. not recognizing, um, 
maybe not seeing clearly, or maybe it doesn't even belong to you. And you think, it, you know, and you've got this attachment to something and you mm-hmm. just keep pulling it forward. So yes, that yeah, can be yeah. very depressing because you're not giving yourself permission to have a different perspective. You're not giving yourself permission to decide to have something different, to create something different, to have a different thought about something. So mm-hmm. yes, that can be very depressing. Well, overall, I think living in the moment, um, meditative, breathing exercises and all of those things just tend to calm your nervous system, improve your mood and bring about more feelings of peace. And all of these things are exactly what we're talking about today, raising your vibration so that you can enjoy your life. (laughs) And when you ask questions, when you're say you're stuck and you're stuck in this moment and you're not sure what to choose it, that's okay too. So we always think that we have to be doing something or something has to happen right here, right now. And that's also a conclusion that we can't just be, you know, we're taught to do, 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 do all the time versus just be and Mm -hmm. being at the heart of what you are is okay. You know, we came here to just be, we came here to be love. So, you know, when you're there, you can, if you feel stuck and you just sit with yourself for a little bit and questions and power, they promote awareness, which then mm-hmm. you have choice, which then gives you possibilities. Mm-hmm. So you're not really in depression anymore. You're not focused forward in anxiety. You're just right here right now. And questions really help you get unstuck. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> most of us, when we're younger, when we ask a lot of questions or just, or, yeah. or I don't know, or this yeah. or that, or, you know, people try to get you to not talk or whatever. And that's just Mm -hmm. nine times out of 10, they don't have an answer for you. So don't give up the questions. Um, Because truly, Mm -hmm. when you're asking questions, you're basically asking your higher self, your personal being, Mm -hmm. you know, what what else is possible. So keep asking questions, even if you're not saying it out loud. Right. That'll help you get out of that depressive state or that anxiety, that anxious state of being. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so on a more physical level, let's talk for a minute about a couple of different things, um, eating real food and reducing and eliminating toxins, both from our body and our mind. Um, obviously, there's a lot here. You know, I don't want to spend a long time on this, but I think it's important for people to know that um, this, the traditional standard American diet right now will absolutely kill you and make you miserable. Yes. So you, we have to get away from that and look at other cultures and other nutrition models. Um, it's not about dieting. It's about eating real food, right. nutrient-dense food. Nutrient dense food and truly anything that's the closest to the sun. It's it's just going to have the highest nutrients because there's not going to be anything else that's interfering with that vibration. So the Mm -hmm. sun gives all the nutrients and gives all that photosynthesis and everything that we need. So when we're eating items that have grown outside and such, we're going to have better quality that we're putting in our body and our body is going to be able to thrive. Unfortunately, what we've put on the soil has a lot to do with what's being grown in the ground. Mm -hmm. So it's very important, you know, that we try to eat to me as organically as possible because we're putting less pesticides and less harmful things in the soil, which then in turn goes into the food, which then in turn goes in us. So, you know, if you're going to eat those things, I believe that we should be more conscientious of where it comes from and Mm -hmm. how much we're putting in our body. When you're looking at, um, you know, meats and foods and things like that, um, I'm not opposed to people, you know, eating. I'm not a vegan by any means, but the way that the food is prepared and, you know, taken care of and then, you know, prepared for us has a lot to do with what we ingest as well. So we're ingesting all the thoughts, all the feelings, all the emotions, everything that goes along, you know, all the anxiety, all the everything that goes and happens with Mm -hmm. these foods that we're ingesting as well. We're ingesting all of that. So just being aware and being conscious of, where we get our food, how our food is grown, who's preparing our food and things like that really does have a difference on how our body feels. So when you're eating foods that have a lighter, I guess, if you will, um, frequency, then you're mm-hmm. going to feel lighter. Yeah. Your body's going to feel lighter. It's going to be able to function better because it's not going to be inundated with chemicals and different things that our body 
it just takes more time to process and sometimes never process and yeah. get stuck in um, the different systems, the muscles, the tissues, the cells, and so forth, um, yeah. because that creates a lot of decay. Mm -hmm. And that's not going to allow you to vibrate very high. It's also right. going to slow down, you know, the mitochondria in your body and the energy output and so forth. Yeah. So you age faster and it creates disease if we're putting um, a lot of processed or genetically modified foods, because we're not meant as you know, beings to put those things in our body. That's not how we were, you know, yeah. created, if you will, to eat. We're mm -hmm. supposed to eat things that are lively and um, whole, if you will, because we are yeah. whole beings. Yeah. And that's what we're talking about today. And we want to be clear. We want to be spiritually connected. We want to have a healthy outlook on life. And the chances are that eliminating as many of the toxins from your from your diet and from your mind are are just a good place to start. Right. It's it, it, you know it's easy to numb out when you're going through a really difficult time. I think a lot right. of people um, adopt some unhealthy uh, ways of of living as they go through a divorce, and and maybe they need that for a short period of time just to cope. You know. But I think a, a more healthful and holistic way of life is is one that you're going to feel um, that what you're putting in and, and is what you're able to put out. Right. You know? it's, and it's, that, what's that's energizing. What yeah. What's energizing? Yeah. Because, you, you know, I think people tend to forget what, you know, like you said, like what you're reading, what you're watching, what you're looking at, things like that. Those those can still be very toxic, too. So mm -hmm. what we think about is what our cells pick up on. So our yeah. cells hear us, if you will. And. We, we are our cells defense. So if we're thinking, you know, really <gasps> fearful, oh my gosh, fight or flight, you know, mm -hmm. thoughts all the time, then that's what our body is doing on a consistent basis. It's in fight or flight. So yes, it's nice to have some comforting things every once in a while. You just can't stay there very long. Um, yeah. Yeah. You, you want to opt for what feels, um, energizing, I guess, if you will. And I, if it's not energizing, then your body's going to tell you very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, your mind's going to tell you very quickly. Um, all the processes in your body will very much communicate with you if you listen. Your body yeah. it has a amazing system that most of us don't pay attention to. But yeah. yeah. And part of that includes, you know, what we surround ourselves with, yes. you know, even in, in our home environment, um, you know, keeping your home clean and organized is not just something you do because your mom told you to. <laughs> it's actually good for your brain and your yes. spirit and your energy. Yes. So um, that and then, you know, obviously getting outside and getting natural sunlight and, and doing physical activity, all of these things are forms of raising your vibration and changing yes. that energy level for you. Yes. Um, you know, and just even putting your feet on the ground, you've heard that earthing and, and whatnot, it, but there really is like an actual um, input of, you know, protons and electrons mm -hmm. and stuff that change the chemistry of your body just by being outside in nature, by taking a walk and, you know, the, the oxygen and the CO2 and all these other things that you get um, just by being in nature actually mm -hmm. is medicine. So yeah. if we can look to those things, you know, drinking a, a cup of tea versus having a soda, mm -hmm. um, something that's naturally grown like that is actually go going to make you feel better in the long run than this immediate fix that in the long run is really going to deteriorate you. So there are yeah. really simple ways to keep your vibration up through food, through, you know, essential oils, through teas, mm -hmm. through healthy, um, you know, opting for fresher foods versus something processed and mm -hmm. so forth. Um, and then the toxins, like you said, around your home environment, just if you have too much electronics or, um, you know, too many TVs on and you're hearing all this stuff and you're just being bombarded by that. Well, our systems are very sensitive. They're going to pick up on all of that, even if we're not being aware of it. Mm -hmm. And there's consequences to your actual cells of your body when you're inundated with those frequencies and yeah. those can be very toxic for you. So yeah, taking a break and shutting everything off and just taking yeah. a moment um, on a regular basis can be very healthy and very energizing for you. Yeah. You have to be very mindful of everything that mm -hmm. you're letting into your body and your being and your mind and your, and your right. thoughts. And so on that note, the next thing I wanted to talk about was thinking positive thoughts, changing your mind, change your life, changes your life. I know it sounds simple, 
simplistic, but it's true. Um, I've actually spent entire episodes on the show here talking about the power of our thoughts <laughs> and the core of how it's, it is the core of how I coach my clients. And I think what you think about you become and each thought you think creates your future. What are your thoughts on that? I believe thoughts become things. Um, it, most definitely. I mean, to two thoughts together, create a concept. Um, mm-hmm. and then, you know, you go from there. So whatever you're telling your body and whatever you're thinking about is truly a projection of what you're going to see next. Mm-hmm. So it is imperative that you are aware of what you're thinking. I've had people, I tell people to set a, a little timer on their phone mm-hmm. and every so often it says, what are you thinking about? <laughs> Nine times out of 10, people don't have an idea of the thoughts that are going through their head. So, you know, there's a loop, there's a program that just, you know, our ego is really amazing. And mm-hmm. you're I'm on the phone talking, I'm driving, I'm like, oh, I'm already there. You know, yeah. that's, you know, that's just a program running. So yeah. you have to be very mindful about what programs you're putting in there. So perspective is huge, changing that mindset and being, you know, but first and foremost, you have to be aware of what it is that you're thinking about. You know, and that goes back to, like I said, when you wake up in the morning, you got about 16 seconds to set your day. Mm. So if it doesn't look pretty, I'd say hit snooze and do it again. And then throughout (laughs) the, and then throughout the day, right. You just, you've got to be, you have to be conscious of what it is that you're intentionally setting up for, um, what's going on in your life. Cause you are the creator and you are responsible, responsible for what it is that you're asking to be and do. Um, the really cool part is, is that like every 10 seconds, you have a choice to change where you are and you have a choice to change your thought process. Mm -hmm. Nobody else can do that for you. Um, really, truly, you're the only person that can do that. Um, you can choose, um, each and every day Mm -hmm. to decide what you want to think, what you want to be, how you want to dress, who you want to talk to, what you want to be around, um, and so forth. So yeah, changing your perspective and just getting, really clear on your mindset will most definitely um, show you the trajectory of what you're putting forward. Yeah, absolutely. You've got to push away the negative and, and draw in the positive because your, your thoughts really truly do determine your life. I mean, they, mm-hmm. your thoughts lead to your feelings, which lead to your actions right. and, and they're, they're for, there's the results of your life. You know? Right. And if you're aware of your thoughts, then you're aware of your emotions. And then you can mm-hmm. choose to say, okay, well, what is this emotion about? Why am I having this? You know, I recognize that you're there, you know, you can go deep with that and just say, okay, th- this doesn't work for me anymore. Um, mm-hmm. It's a really great way to change a negative into a positive. So don't make the negative wrong. Don't go into, oh my gosh, you know, I'm a fool. I, I'm so stupid, all this and everything. Those are just going to spiral you the other way. Instead, you look at it and just say, okay, okay, this is how I feel. This is what's going on. This is a really negative thought and a really negative emotion. What do I need to know about this? Is there anything I need to know about this? What can I do to change this? And that's a different way of tweaking into the positive because not everybody can be all peace, love, and light. I mean, come on. it's just Nobody can. No. (laughs) So, however, you can take a step of recognizing what's going on and then choose something just a little bit better. And then that yeah. trickle effect will choose into that positive emotion. So, yeah. it, you know, it doesn't have to be this big gigantic leap, but it, it, it's there to give you an awareness of, um, yeah, I'd rather feel this way than that way. And mm-hmm. um, you feel better when you're in a positive state of being. I mean, yeah. it's, it's just a given. Um, mm-hmm. Every part of your body feels better. Your physiological aspects work better. Your heart works better. Um, your nervous system works better. Everything works better when you're really choosing to be lighter and to be more positive. Mm-hmm. Um, there's just, I mean, there's a host of benefits with that. But again, yeah. you definitely have the advantage um, because you are conscious to look at why you have negative thoughts and what those negative thoughts and feelings are actually telling you could be telling you, Hey, I'm in a situation that no longer works for me. Hey, you know, this has been really detrimental on my health. I feel very stressed out. I, Mm. what can I do to change this? So, you know, when you're shifting into those positive aspects, I would say, look at the big picture and look at the whole thing and then choose beyond that. Yeah. Great segue. I don't know if you knew I was going to go this direction. But <laughs> last but not least, I saved the most important for last, because if you do everything else we talked about today and you don't apply this one, it will be like shoveling your sidewalk in the middle of a blizzard. <laughs> you have to make certain that your relationships are 
of high vibration with love and peace and joy. And if they're not, you have to make some hard choices because to some extent, anyone, you know, listening today is probably going through or has gone through a divorce and kind of grasps this on some level, but this doesn't just apply to your ex or your soon to be ex. It applies to your mother, your father, your siblings, uh-huh. your coworkers, any friends who drag uh-huh. you down rather than lift you up. You, yeah. you know, you've heard probably that you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So spending time with negative or directionless people lowers your vibration and makes it harder for you to make positive change that you want to make in your life. Yes. And I love that analogy of the five people around you because I look at that on a regular basis and then I have to be accountable that I am a mother. And at any given time, I have three individuals around me. Okay. So those three individuals then have to determine who they want around them. So, Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, there is a big responsibility of how I'm showing up every given moment and what it is that I would like to not only be for myself, but be for another. I do (laughs) work a lot with people where they come to me and ask me, you know, this person and this and that, and ah, they're driving me crazy. And I'm just so angry at work today. And, you know, so, you know, I just tell people to look at them. Most of the time, the emotion of anger or something like that is really calling you to look at change. You would like mm-hmm. something to change. Yeah. And so when you take a step back and you look at what is irritating or who's being negative and stuff, it also gives you a choice to say, okay, that's where they are. That's a very interesting point of view of where they are. I'm not going to align and agree with that, but I'm not going to react and resist to that either. Mm -hmm. I'm going to choose to just let them be where they are. I'm going to pivot and I'm Mm going to come over here and I'm going to decide how I want to be and where I want to be and what I want to think about and what I want to hear. So it is difficult when you're in an environment where you're having a lot of negativity, but you also have a choice to decide if you want to stay there. So if it's a job that's not working for you, The cool thing is where we live right now is we can choose to get a different job. We can Mm -hmm. choose to wear earplugs. We can choose to ask, you know, to sit somewhere else. We can choose. There's a lot of different choices you can ask. Um, But it is very important that people understand that relationship is when you look at relationship, you're not trying to make somebody conform to you. You're not, you know, everybody's different and it's okay to embrace people's differences and not go into making them right, making them wrong, making you right, making you wrong. It's just looking at it and just saying, huh, okay, well, this works for me. This doesn't work for me. And, you know, I'm going to, if I'm at my parents' house and I know that, you know, somebody's going to be talking and being negative for a little bit, I'm going to give myself 10 minutes and say, Hey, I've got somewhere to be. It was really nice to see you, but I'm going to go ahead and exit myself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're not being unkind. You're showing up. You're being considerate of somebody else's time, but you're also being considerate of you and your time and you're leaving and you're not going to leave and say, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I'm out of there. It's just like, you just take a deep breath and you go do you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, really taking the responsibility of how you want to show up in every relationship in your life Mm -hmm. is really going to determine on what you create, you know, all around you. Right. Um, Yeah. Cause as much as you need to be be around people who believe in you and lift you up and pray for you and love you unconditionally without judgment, you need to be that for you the need people to be that, that you're around, person. Yes. you know, remember that the people that are around you, you're one of their five people. So right. you, you want to inspire, you want to inspire people and you want to look for the good in people. Um, <laughs> I have to say that I've done that to a detriment. I see the potential in everyone. Um, I believe it's <laughs> what I came here to do. Yeah. However, you know, you do have to take a step back from that as well, but it's, it's kind of exciting when you see somebody having a bad day and you're like, Oh my God, that, that necklace you have on is just amazing. And boom, you could change somebody's whole entire day, by just by giving them a compliment versus getting mm-hmm. wrapped up in whatever they're wrapped up in. So if you can just kind of exit yourself and find something mm-hmm. in that moment that you can see as gratitude, as generous, as loving, as yeah. <laughs> accepting, as allowing, then you can actually turn around and give that to that person. Because usually people that are being negative need love and compassion and kindness the most. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you want to be that example and you want to set that example. And in doing that, you know, you're not being better than anybody else. You're just being very generous and very kind to you. And you're being very generous and you're being very kind to that next person. Mm -hmm. And that ripple effect is really what we're looking for to keep our vibration high and to keep, other people's vibration high. So then we want to be around each other. Um, 
Right. And then, you know, you do, you magnetize and you project that out and then you start attracting more people that are happier, kinder, nicer. Yeah. And who doesn't want that? (laughs) (laughs) Well, we've covered a lot today, but I think uh, no matter who you are listening today, you've probably heard something that was a new thought for you, if not many, many new thoughts for you, as far as how you can change your experience in the world by doing these kinds of things and thinking these ways that help to change our vibration. So um, in final uh, thoughts, I just kind of want to talk about, uh, again, about you, Angela, and the types of services that you offer people who are wanting to raise their vibration and understand energy healing better? Um, I do a host of different modalities, if you will, Um, some hands on some very energetic, um, some subconscious repatterning, if you will. Um, Everything that I do comes from a place of love, of course, from a place of non judgment. Um, But I do different, some people have heard of Reiki and different types of energy work like that. I do all of those. Um, I do access consciousness. And then I do a lot of life coaching too, to help people shift and change their perspective. I do teach um, the tools and the techniques that I offer you so that you can take them home. So you don't think that I'm quote fixing you, but mm-hmm. in all actuality, I'm giving you, um, you back. And mm-hmm. so that you can become more of you and less of everybody else. <laughs> um, so those are basically my services. Um, I happen to be, I guess people use the word gifted. However, I believe everybody can do this because I teach it is to teach you how to be more um, inner focused, how to have more intuition, how to have more personal responsibility. Um, And in doing that, being able to create the next chapters of your book forward. So um, those are my services. Okay. How can they reach you? Um, my website is Angela L. Holmes.com. Okay. Um, or you can reach me on Facebook or Instagram. Instagram okay. is at Xandercat and I can leave that for you. And Facebook is just my name. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you again for being here. I'm well, excited to share it. this with the world and our little corner of it here at starting over stronger. So I appreciate your insight on all of this. Well, I appreciate you having me on. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Listeners. I know it can be tempting to succumb to a feeling of helpless, helplessness with regard to your future. Um, You know, the world around us is kind of crazy right now. Um, Maybe more than ever before, certainly more than ever before. Um, And even more so if you're in the middle of a divorce. So we're just here to encourage you to turn off the TV, delete the social media apps. If you have to go to whatever links you have to, to cease having that negative energy pouring into you constantly and watch how your world changes around you. Expose yourself to more of these things that we've talked about today that will raise your vibration and your energy level and see how much better you feel and how much more you affect positive change in your own life and in the lives of those around you. I think you'll be very pleased with the outcome. So when you lift yourself up, you bring others with you. So be sure that you are the change you want to see in the world and stay conscious just always of how you are vibrating for yourself and for the world. So thank you again for being here and we'll see you again next week for more help as you divorce and hope as you are starting over stronger.